We are live on the captain's log with the Smash Bros. Corey and Chad, thanks for joining me, guys. Oh, let thanks. me uh, let me share this out on your page so everybody gets to say hi. We're in Fort Myers at uh, iHeartRadio. Just did a little radio show, yep. and it was great. You guys are funny. Thank you. Uh, back in Florida, you guys are here in Florida for how long now? A uh, week. Yeah, we're here for eight days, and uh, but we're we're glad to be in this part of Florida. It's nice. Is it? Uh, is it harder touring a, the country like with both of you guys or is it easier together because you can help each other out? What do you think? I think it's better together and we've been doing it so long together we wouldn't know what it's like to do separately but yeah, we, we take advantage of uh, touring together and being together and it takes away that loneliness of being on the road because I think a lot of comics are lonely uh, out there with just your crew of whoever you're traveling with. It does get a little bit uh, lonesome out there. We talked for a minute uh, about our good friend, uh, Ralphie May, and you yes. guys toured with him for seven years. Yeah. So tell me how um, how that started. How did you hook up with Ralphie? We met Ralphie the originally, uh, it was around the last comic standing. I think it was uh, right, right, before. right before he got on, we did a, a guest set. We didn't even, we, I guess we could say we opened for him, but we yeah. did a guest set in for him in uh, Hollywood. And he came up to us after, gave us some advice and words of encouragement. And uh, we were newer at the time uh, in the comedy business, but he would reach out to us and we would send uh, emails to each other. And uh, we just built the relationship uh, organically, slowly. And then uh, one day he called and said, fly to Chicago. You're going to live on a tour bus with me. <laughs> so and so Ralphie, right? Yeah, and so and we're we, just like, okay. So we flew to let's go, buddy. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We we flew there, and uh, the rest is really history. And he took us around the we went to forty eight states in Canada with him, and um, yeah, we did a what, couple. What did you learn that was so important in this business? I mean, he was one of the greats, and at the time, like he was already huge, right? So yeah, because if it was yeah, he was already big to where yeah. uh, the shows were already sold out. So to us, we. We got to do shows to large audiences right away. And so for us, that was the learning curve is... Um, From clubs to theaters. Four or 5,000 people. Uh, it's a hell of a lot different than telling jokes to two, 300. Where right. The people in the mezzanines up there have no idea who's in the front row. Yeah. So we had to change it up and learn the difference between theaters and, mm -hmm. you know, all that And stuff. what do you like better? Comedy clubs are a little more intimate. Um, it feels like you're you're closer to the people in the theater it's really darked out to where you really can't uh make that facial uh recognition with each other in the and crowd we're high energy i mean we're calm off stage but we, we give it all we got for that hour that yeah. we're on stage yeah. and and uh you know we're not trying to hurt anybody's feelings we just have try to give everybody a good show but big boy would teach us about merchandise and how to make money and what clubs to work and what clubs not to work and who to trust and not to trust and he gave us knowledge that a lot of headliners probably would never. He was also, he was loyal to club owners too. Like if he liked that club and that club worked with him for over the years, then he would, you know, consistently go back. I, I, absolutely. We could tell you a handful of clubs. Like he would do 200 seaters and we'd be there for seven nights. Right. Because they were good to him. Everything on the way was up. sold up. The yeah. whole show. Oh, yeah. yeah. We sell on Mondays. We were in yeah. San Antonio Monday. Two shows on a Monday. Right. But he sold would, out. and it, he taught us that, that it was important. If they were good to you on the way up, you, you be good to those people and he could have came to whatever like this town he could have done it I don't know if you have a big theater but right. he could have came and done the big theater instead he's loyal to those people who were good to him on the yeah. way up so he just that's one thing he taught us he taught us joke structure uh, and he taught us how to close he didn't uh, at the beginning and this is humbling for us uh, he didn't he would tell us we didn't know how to close we'd start <laughs> off hot and our set would be good and then we would just end flat and he would teach us how to end with an explosion that way when you leave the stage it, the, the like he would say he's all the grease is cooking in the in the cast iron skillet and and he would like that uh some headliners don't like their opening act to go in there hot and but and, he gave uh, us no time limit we just looked to the left and when he was ready he would tell us he's right so we could do 20 we could do 45 it's when he thought that and then he would ready. do an hour to oh freaking three God, hours yeah, every single hour to, show 
two hours minimum most yeah. of the time. Yeah, exactly. If there was no second show, he's doing three hours. Always, always. Yeah. He always wanted to give everybody their money's worth. I yeah. think that was important to him, and he always liked the underdog, right? Yeah. And he's totally. like, ah, oh, you guys worked all week to, you know, come see my show. Yeah. Right? yeah. And he if would he say, hey, hours, or he would say, hey, tip the servers. Don't worry about buying merchandise from me. If you, if it's a decision between a, a nice tip to the server or buying a shirt tip the server you know and, absolutely and he was always good to the staff and uh so he taught us the the business part of it to where it was like a college all those years of being with them and doing those couple thousand shows it was like a, a crash course education really totally totally so i have the smash bros with me the uh these guys toured for seven years with ralphie may they've been on the road now for how many years straight i mean my oh God. yeah uh well this is our ninth year of full time like barely being home yeah you never go home no yeah, yeah. i mean hardly like right. we're gonna be home for a few days but then we leave again yeah so. yeah this is the captain's log, and you guys are watching today, but uh, you can see them live tonight at Off The Hook Comedy Club. You don't want to miss that show. It's a 7 o'clock show, one only, yep. and uh, these guys are going to be back every year, but if you want to see them tonight, you better go to offthehookcomedy.com to get tickets. Tell me how you started uh, in the comedy world. Like, You didn't just wake up one day and say, I want to be a comedian. How did that happen? No, we were uh, actually in high school. We took theater arts and uh, we played sports. Then we went to college, community college. We did theater arts and plays. They opened up a local improv. You guys don't really look like the uh, the theater type guys. Yeah, well that's did the thing. Did you look like this with the beards and the, no. and the badass look then? Or? No, and I figured out we could grow and you don't have to shave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that our stage persona. Just down below, shave exactly. down below. Totally. Come on. Yeah. That's but I think that our stage presence and our stage uh, performance is the polar opposite of our true offstage antics. But we did start growing the beards out a handful of years ago. and uh, uh, But no, we, we like theater arts and plays uh, and acting and all that. We used to try to do music videos. And we've been in the business, you know, we're going on 17 years of, of comedy and the entertainment world. But they opened up a local uh, improv in our town. We went down for an open mic. And... Next thing you know, here were you, we are. How old, were you in high school then or college? Or? Uh, college. We were in our early 20s. So did you have some real jobs before this or what? Actually, yeah. What'd you do? Yeah, uh, I was actually a commodities broker, a buyer. I really? would buy commodities, sat in a desk. And I was a social worker. And then we got on the show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Uh, with Jeff Foxworthy, and we won $175,000. No way! Yeah. yeah, I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah. yeah. We were on the first season, the highest rated episode. Uh, you can look it up. And uh, Well, we found out that... We're as smart as a fourth grader. Right. And that's combined. <laughs> but we took that money and we actually called Ralphie and he just uh, was on our uh, last Wait, comment. so you guys went all the way? Yeah. Yeah, we, we got to 300000 We were two away from a million. And we got to $300,000 but didn't know the answer, so we tapped out. And we took that one hundred seventy. dollars You did it together? Yeah. Yeah, they actually picked me. We got kicked off last comic standing. Uh, this was when you lived in a house and all that. Weird. Right. And we made it pretty far in the prelims or whatever you want to say. So right before they taped the live show, we got kicked off, uh, voted off, whatever. And uh, we're walking down the street. A car pulls up. He goes, hey, you guys want to be on a TV show? I go, get out of here. We just got kicked off one. He goes, if you're twins, I can put you on this TV show that's coming out he, next year. He gave us a card. And, we, you know, we've been approached in all kinds of shenanigans over the years. So we were very leery. Yeah, of and, course. I get that all the time. Oh, I, I want to invest. Or you oh. want to invest in this gig. I get <laughs> yeah. the next best thing. I yeah. get that all the time. Yeah. So, so we looked into this guy's company, production company, and did a lot of research before we even called him back. And then we realized that this guy was real. Was real and we uh, the TV show wasn't even on TV at the time so we went to Manhattan Beach California we showed up to film and Jeff Fox where he pulls up in a yellow Hummer oh, park bench oh, no. and, and I'm like I like, hey y'all you're on my new show and we're like what is it he goes oh they'll tell you and so we competed against these kids and um you know, it, it was a very good experience because we invested that money into our comedy to where we called Ralph. We were friends with Ralph and we're like, hey, we, we got this money. And he goes, you know what y'all need to do? You invest. We bought a, a buy merch, buy a car that's good on gas. So we bought all that. We invested all this money into everything. And then we just took gigs all the way across the United States. And we would take gigs in whatever town Ralphie was in, like smaller gigs. And he would let us open up for him. We'd do our little pizza place or coffee shop yeah, or yeah. whatever. And, and, or whatever. And then and here we are uh, years later we, we, we invested that money and it really 
taught us that. Did you guys quit your jobs right then? I then? did. As soon as I got the money, I did. You I were did like, not. I'm out. Yeah, I did because not. my boss one day, I, I don't know why I thought we were rich with 175000 Yeah. <laughs> Looking back on it, it isn't, you know, really anything. You have to pay the taxes on it. Though, oh, which we yeah. did, and we I bought property and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But um, I realized that I probably should have kept it. But we were doing enough gigs to where I, I was surviving. Right. I, I, I was making money. We are selling T-shirts and, you know, and all that. But um, that shows what helped us take comedy to not a hobby to a real job. Yeah. That was April 16th of 2006. Wow. I remember the day exactly because I told my boss to, You're good uh, with dates, man. I You, yeah. you remember the divorce dates to the Yeah, tea, I do. The Ralph yeah, number, yeah, numbers and dates. We're good. We're good wow. with that. Yeah. So what was the question that you tapped out on? Ah, it was what U.S. president was first to win the Nobel Peace Prize? Tap out. Yeah. yeah well, out. Steve, we, had no we, went, idea. we went into the commercial and I was whispering to him, you know, because they don't want you to talk too yeah. much. And I go, do you know? And he goes, no. Uh, and Jeff walks up to us and, tells and, us. and he told us, he goes, guys, listen, 175 grand will change your lives. He goes, it's enough money to, you're not going to be rich or anything, but it's enough to change your immediate uh, fi yeah. financial situation. Also, don't be embarrassed. Just hit the button and say you're not smarter than a fifth grader and, and good luck with your life. And we came back for commercial and that's exactly what we did. And the answer was Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, wow. Yeah, for the national park since he did all so the national So if we would have got that, we would have got 300000 then, then, then it's uh, five hundred thousand, then a million, and we didn't. Uh, we were two away, but so they were trying to say a fifth grader knew that. They supposedly claimed, they said that all five kids or four kids knew it. No know. way. Yeah, that's what they said. Wow. They knew a lot of stuff during that show. I remember going into commercial. <laughs> I told my brother, I go, I have children, and, and they're not as smart as these kids. I was like, right. what kids are they yeah. freaking interviewing? I go, man, what are they feeding them? Flintstone Rocket vitamins? Science? Yeah, what's yeah. going on? So, what was a good question, though? Do you have a good question that they asked? Yeah, I one, probably wouldn't. One even was it. another one was uh, what's a navigational device? Uh, no, it, no, an instrument. It, yeah, what's also uh, an art instrument as well as a navigational device, which is a, a compass. A compass. Okay. So it was it was stuff like that. But the first one was easy. It's like uh, what many, days of the week start with the letter T. How many days in the week start with the letter T? So in our minds, we're like, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, you know, we're trying to, yeah. you know, you want to take your but, time. This but also keep in mind, it's very high pressure. There's lights, there's a crew, of course. there's 400, 500 people in the studio watching live audience. Like the show tonight, baby. And I'm yeah. Going, right? Woo! Get your tickets. Come on. Wow. But, but yeah, no, it was a very... Uh, How many questions did you get? We got like eight. Yeah, seven eight. Or eight. And yeah. you guys got eight, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And you can have free cheats. So we had one kid named Jacob. God bless that kid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he did. helped us with our last two. Uh, something about the Himalayan mountains or something, and he helped us. He knew the answer, and we had to. It was said, copy his answer. Whatever he said, we had to go with it or drop down to twenty five thousand. So we risked a um, hundred and whatever thousand. And he couldn't believe, Jeff Foxworthy couldn't believe we were going to risk a hundred grand on what a kid said. And we were like, we trust this kid. How the heck did you do that? We I don't just, know. Something in our it hearts. Just, you knew yeah. that. We just knew this kid knew. Like, we were just looking at him. And I go, this kid knows. And yeah. he's like, okay, we're going to copy Jacob's answer. And when they said we had it right... We were screaming like we won the Super Bowl. Oh, of course. We, oh, I mean, that's are a you, lot of money. Uh, dude, if, if I win a hundred bucks, <laughs> oh, that's that, us. I'm yeah. like, dude, yeah. I'm all going, baby. Yeah. yeah. We were so ecstatic. I remember we were getting the crowd fired up. We went to commercial and Jeff goes, no one. We've only shot four episodes. He goes, no one's ever incorporated the audience. But I think that's where the stand-up in us uh, came into play. Wait, you because you went to the audience? <clears throat> we would turn around and get the crowd fired up. They're we were standing telling, up cheering. Like, they had to calm them down. We got them so worked <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, every time we won, we'd tell the crowd, come on. We'd make them stand up and cheer for us because yeah. it was like the like a wrestling energy vibe sort yeah. of, you know. and. We were That's eating so it up. cool. And uh, had there been other winners before you guys? No one that ever won more than us. Most of the people were $25,000. And then, so when Jeff came up to us, he was I don't think it. anyone won the million. Uh, no, we? later on, Corey, in the, like, the fourth season, oh, okay. one, uh, teacher won. Oh, okay. Um, but another lady risked the million and dropped down to $25,000. Oh, my God. That's oh. something that'll... That off. right there, is oh. the, she'll never live it down. No never. way. No way. You I can't told, recover from no. that. No. You 
can't be like, no tomorrow way. I'll make another million. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't happen like that. No way. Oh my God. But thank God for that show. Uh, if it wasn't for that show, we probably would have taken it so serious comedy wise. No, you know? thank God you were walking down the street and somebody said, hey, you too, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we told you Alonzo guys. Bowden because, by the way, he's the one that voted no. Uh, we told Alonzo <laughs> Bowden. Thank you. We told him later in life. It's 10 years later. Sure, I know a lot. And uh, he, we go, we want to thank you for saying no. He goes, why? And I go, because when we left, we won this money. And he goes, where's my cut? Like, <laughs> yeah. Right. But um, thank God he said no. And, and otherwise... I don't think we were ready either, uh, to be honest with you. We thought we were ready during the last comic days. But I look back now with the, the variety of material we have now and how our stage presence and the whole package, uh, if today was 10 years ago when we did the show, we would be ready. But back then, we thought we were ready. Right. I don't think we were. Which I think a lot of people on that show that e either won or made it anywhere, they, a lot of them weren't, right? They yeah. just, like, yeah. hit, hit it. Sometimes when you when it works on TV, it works better than it does on stage. Totally. And, like, we were doing local material and stuff. And then we realized touring with Ralphie, like, dump all that local jokes. Yeah. Uh, now we do research. Like, we came to Naples. We brought out the laptop the other night, and we were looking up your guys' demographic, yeah, uh, sure. the financial stuff, different towns. We tried to do a little bit of research per town that we're in. Well, that's cool. But, um, yeah. You learn that, you know, doing jokes nationally and then doing jokes locally are a big, big difference. Totally, totally. Well, guys, I got the Smash Bros with me, and uh, we are out on the Captain's Log. We'll be back tomorrow. You don't want to miss it because we got a great show with Goomba Johnny. Woo! We out. See him tonight. Off the hook, guys. We, we, we lit it. We lit it.